Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the Legends of Chess 2020 Grand Final. So we have Magnus Carlsen uh, and Jan Niepomniaszy, two of the best players of the tournament and they meet in the final. And I would like to show you the game number three and some flashbacks to the game number one as the players played the same line, the same opening and game number two and the game number four ended with the draws. So without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. Nepo starts as white and he play e4 and Magnus Carlsen answer with c5. We have Sicilian defense on the board. Knight f3, d6, d4, c takes on d4, knight takes on d4, knight f6 attacking the pawn on e4 and knight c3 defending and a6. Nydorf variation and here, believe me or not, but Nepo went for the freak attack. And if you don't know what is a freak attack, um, I talk about that during the Tata Steel uh, tournament in January when Jordan Van Forest started to play that. And everybody was shocked. Jan Gustafsson said that uh, Van Forest brothers actually uh, have the competition who gonna play the dumbest move. And Peter Fiedler said, oh no, uh, this was the opening I was studying and I used in the serious tournaments. Rook G1, the freak attack. Uh, and now I would like just to show you the one of the lines which which is pretty crazy uh, and after knight c6 uh, g4 this this is the main idea of course and after knight d4 queen d4 uh, the point is can you take the pawn on g4 it's actually very interesting. You can take it with the knight, but you cannot take it with the bishop because after rook g4, knight g4, there is queen a4 which wins the game. And now b5 is not possible because knight b5 wins the game, uh, a b5, and now no, white doesn't win the queen, but mating on a8. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, so black would be forced to play something like queen d7 and after bishop b5, uh, win the queen or get back the material and simply after queen d8 uh, win back um, more material and also win the pawn. Um, so for example after g6 preparing to, to castle just simply queen b5 and white gonna have extra pawn and these two connected pass pawns gonna win the game. So freak attack uh, is very very interesting. Here Magnus Carlsen has something else against the freak attack and he played b5. Uh, preparing of course bishop b7. We have g4 by Nepo and now bishop b7 as planned. g5 and here very interesting um, situation. Can black actually take the pawn on e4? Because, you know, it's attacked twice and Magnus Carlsen see that Nepo has some, you know, home preparation uh, and he didn't want to get into the trap in the first game. And he in the first game, um, I'm showing you the, the line from the first game, knight f to d7. This is what Magnus Carlsen played. Uh, so very safe move. And after a3, g6. Uh, h4 was played, bishop g7 uh, and h5. So attack on the on the king side. And after knight c6, asking to to exchange the the, the more pieces. Now, the, as you see, the knight is attacked twice. So bishop e3. Now knight c5 attacking this pawn f3. And after castle, h takes on g6, f takes on g6. Uh, and after exchanging more pieces, bishop e2. And black got better position here. However, Magnus Carlsen missed the, the, the proper continuation and actually Nepo managed to uh, equalize the game. And in quite drawish end game, uh, queen end game, both sides had the three pawns. Uh, Nepo blundered and lost the game. So the first game where Magnus actually went knight f to d7, uh, Magnus Carlsen won. Then, then we had the draw. And here Magnus said, OK, I'm winning. So uh, Jan, show me what you got. Knight e4. Uh, we have knight takes on e4, bishop takes on e4, and now uh, 
another interesting story about the, the freak attack and, and this continuation because uh, Tigran Levoni Petrosian, not, not Tigran Petrosian, but Tigran Levoni Petrosian, uh, he was born one month after uh, the, the, real, the real Tigran uh, Petrosian died uh, and his father wanted to give him the name Tigran, so you know, he had to become the grandmaster and, and he played Queen G4, which is very, very tricky uh, because bishop is under attack and after uh, bishop b7 bishop g2 bishop takes on g2 queen g2 with the attack on the rook and look at this uh, knight d7 protecting the rook and actually Sasha Grishuk during the, the commentary he said uh, I saw one of the best uh, trap in the openings ever this is so beautiful that 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 is just insane so feel free actually to pause the video and find the the most beautiful continuation for white it's actually not you know straightforward winning uh, because black has some defense however it's it's very beautiful so this is the hint for you while i enjoy my cup of tea So the move we're gonna try to find here is g6 and g6 is completely insane after h takes on g6 continuation is knight e6 knight e6 and of course the knight cannot be taken because of the checkmate very beautiful uh, so what black have to play is rook h2 so black has to find rook h2 uh, and they don't even equalize the game. Of course, uh, white not gonna take uh, the rook, but rather take this rook. And now if queen takes the rook, then the knight jumps here and wins the game. So it's not possible, uh, but rather f takes on e6. And, and after queen a6, white stands better here, uh, are up the exchange and... Um, and much active pieces uh, also the, the king is in the center so not easy the game for for black but of course uh, it's still playable uh, so this is how crazy um, this opening is remember freak attack in the sicilian nidorf that that's pretty interesting and i think more people will start to play it because uh, after tata still uh, not many people actually saw that uh, where jordan van forest play against uh, alireza firuzia and he just draw that game uh, but here nepo prepare something else not queen to g4 but a4 and magnus carlsen uh, told for a while what is going on here uh because the pawn on b5 is attacked twice now so it's a pretty risky business here this knight on d4 it's extremely active here so magnus went for e5 kicking the knight and nepo immediately answer with a takes on b5 and now would you take the knight? This is a pretty risky business. The engine suggests is the best move in the position, but look at this. Uh, you are low on time already because you had to think, you know, uh, about, about this continuation. Uh, and now if you take the knight, you have to calculate queen d4. Now the bishop is under attack, so uh, that's pretty dangerous. But also after d5, you don't even stabilize the, the position because now you cannot even castle because the queen is watching on g7. So if the bishop moves somewhere, uh, black gonna, you know, stay with the king forever in the center. Now rook g3 is coming, rook e3, then f3, and you have to calculate all of that extremely complicated so magnus carlsen say okay it's too much for me bishop e7 i want to castle uh, i want to castle and then let's continue but nepo said uh, rook g4 that's you know i continue my preparation what do you have here uh, magnus takes on b5 which is also very tricky because now the rook on a1 is under attack uh, so white cannot take the bishop on e4 uh, and this bishop actually defends uh, a8 so if white takes the, the rook then the bishop can take it of course uh, but first bishop b5 with check uh, and now probably king f8 would be would be much better here 
Uh, however, Magnus still want to castle because after after King F8, this rook gonna have the problems, you know, uh, with developing. So uh, Magnus prefer to just keep that option of the of castling, and he played Knight D7, and here Bishop D2, very important move. And Magnus said, I just actually missed that move. Uh, and uh, and yeah, I, I just missed that, missed that in my calculation. So I start to be in troubles. Bishop b7 by Magnus Carlsen. And now knight f5 attacking the pawn on g7. Uh, so Magnus Carlsen probably should play g6. However, it's very difficult decision. He castle. Uh, and now rook a8. Bishop takes on a8. And now rook h4. Uh, very strong attack, making a space for the queen, so queen gonna join the attack, go to h3, and this is the plan, and the pawn on g5, uh, blocking all the, all the position of black, so a very difficult uh, position for Magnus, we have g6 attacking the, the knight now, uh, and now queen g4 as planned, and now very interesting, but uh, the knight cannot be taken, because if the knight is taken, queen h5, and knight f6 then the knight can be taken and there is no way to stop the checkmate so that's not possible magnus carlsen play the best defensive move knight c5 actually is the only defensive move here and it's not even saving the game in the all variation of course the idea is to bring the knight to e6 and control g7 so in some variations uh, when the when white actually uh, sacrifice the rook then the queen on h6 uh, cannot checkmate on g7 so this is the idea knight c5 and now believe me or not but there is only one way for white uh, to win this game there is only one winning move so feel free to pause the video and uh, find the winning move for white. It's extremely difficult. It's actually two moves which you have to spot uh, while I enjoy my cup of tea one more time. Okay, ready? So oh, this, this is actually a bit of joke because it's, it's very difficult to spot that. King f1. King f1 is the winning move, uh, the only winning move. And now I will tell you why uh, a bit later. A bit later when I'm showing you another variation what happened in the game. Uh, but the idea is roughly that the, this bishop cannot take on g5 together uh, with taking on d2 with check. This is the only idea behind that. And you probably not understand yet why, but I will show you why a king to f1 is so important. So for example, bishop e4 now attacking the knight uh, and white has to find... Uh, the bishop is of course protected uh, and bishop has to go to a5 deflecting the queen the point is that the bishop cannot be taken because this is actually forced checkmate king h8 and after rook h7 uh, this actually is a checkmate so that's not even possible but bishop to f5 have to be played and after bishop d8 bishop g4 uh, bishop e7, that's completely insane. Rook can go to b8, now exchange this bishop th this way. So rook g4, rook b8, and now bishop d6 wins the pawn, wins the pawn. So all of this king f1 um, and bishop to a5 was only to win the pawn. Of course, the pawn on b b2 cannot be taken because the, the knight is under attack. Uh, and even if the knight goes to e6, uh, then rook a4 and the rook cannot take on b2 again because rook a8 and after king goes to, to g7 there is the this idea uh, of forking the king and the rook so uh, white gonna win with these two connected passed pawns so this is the idea how, how to continue the game king f1 and then you know bishop a5 pretty crazy uh, impossible to spot that uh, nepo went for much easier solution 
queen h3 immediately. The problem is black actually has the resources to draw the game, but black has to be also very precise. And Magnus Carlsen said in the interview that he found it. He saw that uh, and he wanted to play that. However, he played another move, uh, but the best move in the position is actually bishop g5. And now after rook h7, the problem is uh, bishop d2 comes with check, so b white has to react, king d2, and now queen g5 also comes with check. King c3, now uh, knight e4, so uh, moving the king uh, to, let's say, b4, and only now the, the knight can be taken. Uh, and after rook h8, uh, king g7, queen h7, the king can escape, white can win the exchange, however, uh, after queen on d2, there is the, the forced, uh, actually, perpetual check. So queen a5, and after bishop a4, uh, queen c5, queen a2, uh, queen c4, uh, queen a3, queen c5, uh, queen a2, queen c4, and that's perpetual. And the problem is that white cannot try to win, for example, by bishop b3, which looks pretty strong. However, it's losing move. It's losing because now queen a6 and the bishop cannot retreat. Actually, this is the best move in the position, but it's still losing. Uh, but after king b1, uh, there is actually forced checkmate in 5. So this time, feel free to pause the video and find the checkmate. 5 moves and uh, I think you can enjoy that. And uh, while I enjoy my cup of tea, one more time. Okay, ready? This this shouldn't be so difficult. Uh, the idea is to, of course, knight d2 first, and after king c1, not king a1, but rather king f1. And now, uh, after king d2, queen f2, the king cannot go back, because that would be a checkmate on e1, but king d3. And now two more moves. First is, of course, bishop e4 with check. And now after after moving the king wherever, there is a, also a checkmate. Uh, if king on c3, the, the checkmate is delivered on d4. And if uh, here, then on c5. So pretty insane. Uh, bishop on g5. But Magnus said that he was completely enraged in this position. Uh, and for some reason, pl he played h5. And h5 is actually the losing move. So uh, if you want to, you know, uh, find the winning continuation, it's it's actually it's not very difficult to spot. It's uh, rook h5. So there is no need to pause the video one more time. Uh, and after g takes on h5, queen h5, uh, Magnus play knight e6. And in this position, he resigned the game. And he resigned because g6 is just crashing. The checkmate is coming in the next move. If knight g5 defending, it doesn't work. Simply bishop g5 checkmate is still on the board. Uh, black can actually deliver one check, one more check, and there are no more checks. So, uh, so yeah, that's all. Checkmate is coming in the next move. And after f takes on g6, it's it's still forced. Queen g6, king h8, queen h6, king g8, queen e6 again with check, rook f7. And after knight h6, the rook gonna fall as well. Uh, if king f8, there is a checkmate on f7. And if king h7, then queen f7, the knight is protected. So uh, king h8 is the only move. And now bishop d3, there is a checkmate on h7. It can be stopped by by playing e4, but then another bishop comes to the uh, to the main diagonal and uh, bishop f6, uh, bishop f6, queen f6, and now checkmate on g8. So uh, this is why after knight e6, Magnus Carlsen resigned. What a game! Freak attack again. I was waiting for that, you know, for the freak attack. It's an awesome name. Also, you know, all awesome idea. And Magnus Carlsen, a couple of days ago, he just said, you know, in every opening you should play, you know, try g4, g5. Maybe it's gonna work. And he got surprised, uh, you know, in the Sicilian neither that somebody 
somebody can play a freak attack against him. That's that's just incredible. Beautiful game. Uh, one of the games, of course, was was won by Magnus Carlsen, but this one, beautiful miniature. Congratulations to Jan Nepomniashi. Uh, and as always, if you like this video, press like. If for some reason you don't like it, press unlike. And if you don't want to miss another games, Blitz games, which gonna be decisive because after the four games in the rapid time format we had the, the draw 2-2-2 two, two, two. so the blitz games um, gonna be decisive and if not then Armageddon so feel free to subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one